What's up, happy people, and welcome to the latest Employee Baltimore show on Facebook Live. As always, we are excited to talk about all the great things that are done as part of the Career Center Network of the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. And today we're going to have a little treat. We're going to do a little mini uh, sector roundtable today Keep uh, with a, a couple of local transportation companies. So it should be really fun. Uh, my name is Bill Carnes. I know uh, you guys are used to seeing uh, Marvin. Him and I are going to be switching off. Uh, occasionally, because Marvin's got a lot on his plate. I am one of the business service representatives uh, for the Employer Services Division, located down at the South Baltimore Employment Connection Center. I've been with the agency for 16 years, worked with a lot of great businesses, and love this forum. Love to talk about, and we talk about a lot of things. I, I try to be business-centric. We're going to talk about some local things that are going on, but all things Baltimore, and I really enjoy talking about you know my city. I lifelong Baltimore and grew up. In South Baltimore, this, this is my place. Uh, and as always, please comment, like, and share this video on your Facebook pages. If you got any family or friends that are looking for employment, looking for training, just trying to find out what's going on in the uh, employment uh, area, hey, get them on. Uh, we do this show weekly, reach a lot of folks, a lot of good resources. So, uh, you know, invite your friends and family to come on. So uh, let's start off. We're going to do it a little bit differently today. Oh, and as always, uh, if you want to work with us, Maryland Workforce Exchange is our main tool that we use. Uh, so a lot of you guys are familiar with that. If you have to file for unemployment, that's the page that you use. But uh, we're, that's our version of Indeed. Um, we have literally hundreds, if not thousands, probably thousands of employers that post their jobs on there. And they're live jobs. And then you go on Indeed a lot and you might see some blanks and they're dead, things like that. Our stuff on MWE, a lot of it's current. It's folks like myself who are posting our jobs. Employers go, go in there all the time pulling resumes. So take a look at it. It's a great, great avenue to find employment. And it's with local government jobs, state jobs, and a lot of private industry. So you definitely go check that out. So how's everybody doing? We got a great, great show for you today. A lot of stuff going on this weekend. Hopefully the weather is going to cooperate. I'm going to ask my great producer, Katanya, we're going to talk about, uh, she's going to pop some slides up for me, talk about all the cool things that are happening this weekend. Um, you know, for those of you who are sports fans like me, the Orioles are starting to call up the young guys. I don't know if you saw it. Um, you know, there was a little bit of controversy with the Orioles between the sons and the mom, and mom squelched that little beef right away. I don't know if you guys saw that. Mom said, this is how it's going to go. And that's it. Orioles aren't going anywhere, which I thought was pretty uh, fascinating. Ravens got mini camp. Great to see uh, Lamar back in the saddle again. So, you know, I just, if you're like me, I can't wait till football season. So, like I said, lots of cool things happening this weekend. Uh, AFRAM is Juneteenth weekend. Uh, it's lots of really great live acts. I'm an old guy, so the first one that pops up in my head is the OJs, you know. I'm just wondering, and if anybody's out there today, I'm just curious if there's still any original members. I'm a big Temptations fan. I think the only original left with the Temptations might be Otis Wilson. Correct me if I'm wrong out there. I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure. But looks like a lot of great acts. It's a Druid Hill Park. Uh, our agency, Mayor's Office of Employment Development, will have two tables there. And that information, job opportunities, definitely come see us. It's always a great event. Hopefully the weather holds off. It's not too hot and we have a nice, comfortable time. Last time I think I did Afram was when it was at M&T Bank uh, in the parking lot. It was a long while ago. Man, I had a blast. The food is always phenomenal at Afram. So hopefully lots of people come out. You know, that's a Baltimore tradition. Uh, and I'm glad to see it. it's full stream. You know, we're seeing a lot of events coming back after uh, after uh, COVID. Of course, Sunday is Father's Day. I was sharing this with some of my colleagues. The father, to all you fathers out there, you know, when it comes to holidays, uh, I was looking at something that was put out by Hallmark in ter terms of money spent. You know, it could be merchandise, whatever. Of course, the number one holiday is Christmas. Number two is Mother's Day. Number eighteen. It's Father's Day. Fathers, you guys all need love. We need to get the fa Father's Day at least into the top 10, get some awareness. And you know what? As, as a dad, no more socks, 
no more ties. Think out of the box, okay? There's all kind of cool stuff out there. Look out for your dad. So whoever was your father figure for myself, it was my grandfather. I was raised by my grandfather. It could be anybody, but someone who filled that role for you, give him a shout out. It actually does mean a lot. So what else we got going on, Katanya? Juneteenth. Oh, awesome. So Juneteenth is also on uh, Sunday. And I just want to let folks know there's going to be a lot of local celebrations, really cool events going along with that. And um, state and federal, I know our, our agency is closed on Monday for the holiday. So just be aware of that. Uh, very, you know, I know I think last year and Katana can correct me if I'm wrong, was the last year we uh, officially celebrated as a, as a federal holiday. Long time coming. Um, lots of great events I know that are around the Baltimore area. So look for that also. And what else we got going on, Katanya? Is that it? Let's see. Oh, Pride Month. So it's again, Pride Month is really important. You'll see a lot of events. I think the parade already happened. And we're all about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, my stepson's. Shout out to them. Um, you know, they went through, uh, Char Charlie and Kyle, they went through a lot of stuff when they were growing up as kids. I'm really happy to see that, you know, view, have people look at everybody and we're trying to give everybody a shot and love everybody. It makes me happy. I don't want anybody to ever feel that they're not part. You know, and so that's why it's important that we talk about events like that, not to get, you know, any personal stuff like that. But, hey, you know, it's it's really kind of important that we make sure everybody has a seat at the table. So, you know, be aware of lots of more events. In fact, we were at uh, an event uh, as an agency, I think, uh, about a week and a half ago. It was really cool. Had a great time down at the War Memorial Plaza. So, all right. What else we got going on, Katanya? Uh, okay. So I think we're, that's all we're going to talk about for the current events. So about uh, two weeks ago, at, down at the center at uh, the South Baltimore Employment Connection Center, we had a transportation fair. We had about a dozen employers, uh, really great employers. We had uh, companies looking for CDLA drivers, CDLB drivers, and Class C drivers. And the thing that uh, really struck me is how... The opportunities for Class C drivers are there's a lot of different diverse uh, companies out there. I know a lot of people think, OK, well, well delivery drive and I can drive for Uber. Or I can drive for Lyft. Uh, we had a company spin where you just had a regular driver's license. They were paying 17, 18 bucks an hour to pick up scooters in a box truck. And that was a very popular stop. We had a company, Maximum Day Services, a healthcare company, just needed van drivers and was paying $16, $17 an hour. And one of the companies that are industries that we want to focus on is uh, transportation, but specifically paratransit companies. And the reason I wanted to bring them up is people don't realize how important they were, especially during the pandemic. So we had two uh, companies there. We had uh, Transdev, which is an international company. They're all over the place. And we have uh, Dream Management, which is a subsidiary. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a little bit of a transportation roundtable. I'm going to talk about all the different things that they're facing, what they did, how they filled the void during COVID. And the great thing is they're paying for anybody that has a Class C license, they're paying 20 bucks an hour plus a signing bonus just to get on. I mean, they have lots of opportunities. I was talking to them ahead of time. Uh, Dream management's at 50% capacity. We're looking at, uh, and I know Transdev is always asking us for folks. So we're going to bring them on. Um, Katani, if you can, you want to bring in Andrea and Arlette for me from uh, Transdev? What's up, ladies? How you doing? Thank you very much for coming on to the Employee Baltimore Show. And uh, as always, you guys are literally neighbors of mine. You're a block and a half away. You know, we've always tried to send folks down to you. We appreciate you guys coming to all our events. Uh, and uh, can we also bring on James and Kendra from Dream Management? What's up, hi, James? How are you? Hi, hi. Thank you for having us. Okay, Kendra, thank you for coming on today. So, 
Uh, we're going to do a little bit of round table. I'm going to shoot some questions out, but we'll, before we get started, if everybody can just introduce themselves and tell everybody what their role is with their particular companies. And Andrea, I'm going to start off with you. Then we'll go to Arlette, then James, then Kendra, if that's okay. Okay, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for inviting us to this. Uh, it's uh, exciting to be part of the community. Uh, my name is Andrea Spainauer. I am the HR manager at TransDev Services. Um, at 1601 Wacomico Street. Uh, I just started about two months ago, so I am new to the company. Uh, I do have a retail background and I'm learning a lot about transportation. Some similarities, uh, some differences, but it's an exciting organization and it's an exciting company. And I look forward to my growth and to hiring a lot of people who wanna grow with the company too. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arlette Whitley. I'm the general manager for TransDev. Um, again, Bill, thank you for having us on. We are so excited about this opportunity and being able to speak to folks. But um, as Ms. Andrea um, said, you know, we're located uh, right around the corner from you. Um, and we welcome, I mean, really welcome people to come in and apply to see what we have to offer, which is what we're going to talk about, you know, some today. But thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. Hello. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Ward. I am the vice president of Dream Management Incorporated. I've been with the company going on my third year now, and I just recently assumed the vice president role. Uh, I help our recruiter, Kendra, who will be coming on next uh, to introduce herself, uh, try to get as many people in the door as possible. We're looking to hire uh, mobility power transit drivers, just like TransDev. We have a reciprocal relationship. We support each other. Um, and let's get people to work. Thank you, James. Hello everyone, I'm Kendra Shaw. I am the recruiter here at Dream Management. I've been here about two and a half months now, so I'm pretty new to this, um, but still learning and looking forward to recruiting as many people as possible. Thank you for having us today, Bill. Look forward to answering your questions and hopefully getting some more people in the door. Okay. So first of all, we're gonna go back to my poll question. What are you guys doing for the dads or the father figures in your life? <laughs> <laughs> once on that because you know i'm still fixated on 18th most popular holiday don't I'm don't worry little, bill I, I got left it. Out, you know <laughs> don't worry bill i i'm gonna save the whole market i give good father's day gifts oh, do you? So yeah you my, my dad has swelling of his legs edema uh so i bought him a, a an inflatable massage kit that will hopefully help re reduce the swelling he's a carpenter last year i bought him magnetic uh, tool holders while he's on the right. roof. So I hooked my dad up. Okay, good deal. See, my boys know, you know, my son, my son's live in LA and Utah, but they know what I like. I make sure I get an album. They send me music. I'm a music buff. Okay. Dad told them a long time ago, no ties, no socks. <laughs> well, they sent me soap one year. I, that was kind of a mixed message. I was okay with that. They sent me beer soap. So I guess that was okay. Good deal. So I wanted to... Uh, to uh, transition talk about, you know, people don't realize when we talked about COVID and the, the term essential workers came out a lot. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people really realize what kind of role or how important of a role that you guys played over those two years and still playing right now. I mean, the people that relied on paratransit companies for dialysis to get to their just to get to their doctor's appointments. My mom is 86. She's at her home and we have to call the MTA, the paratransit companies all the time to make sure she gets where she needs to get to. And the interesting thing, there wasn't long delays. I mean, you guys filled the void. So, number one, kudos, because I know that had to be an extremely extremely tough task and you know arlette and james can you guys talk about what you guys did with how you thought out of the box i'm sure there was lots of overtime there was a lot of hand wringing there was a lot of sweat and tears talk about that whole COVID process and how you guys got through it you want to start off first for me james sure 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 no when COVID hit i i started right when COVID hit and it was a shock to 
everyone's system, the whole mo mobility service itself from the state level kind of froze for a couple of weeks. Um, but in order to keep r as many routes covered as possible, make sure elderly disabled individuals could get not only to doctor's appointments, but the mobility service that they need to be able to go to the grocery store, anywhere the routes can take them. It consistent work, hard work, hit the pavement from a recruiting side to make sure we can fill the routes that we can, um, doing what we can to keep our drivers safe from COVID. Uh, there was the time uh, everyone was wearing a mask. Now you have the option to wear a mask, sanitizing, cleaning the shuttles, maintaining social distance. So it was really a whole team effort trying to keep everyone healthy, trying to keep the routes filled, trying to make sure the drivers that we have feel safe and appreciated. Okay. Arlette, you want to talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. You know, um, as, as Jane said, you know, it was really tough. Um, you know, we call our employees, our operators, which is the heartbeat of our organization, we call them heroes. They were frontline heroes. They were the ones, as James, you know, stated, hitting the pavement, you know, day in, day out, um, ensuring that people were actually getting to their, um, you know, to dialysis, to doctor's appointments on time. And, you know, it came a time where we had to make some tough decisions also which was unfortunately we, you know, we had uh, service was reduced by MTA, of course. And so we had to lay some folks off or people were being furloughed. And, you know, you know, things were just really, really tight. Um, just again, just trying to ensure that we were picking up people within a timely manner. Um, also just trying to keep people working because at the end of the day, they still have, you know, um, have livelihoods, you know, um, that we knew at some point in time that people would come back, but it was unknown. So it was just really, really challenging trying to, again, stay engaged with people that we did have to furlough, but at the same time, ensuring that the folks that were working, um, you know, that they were actually out and about and being the heroes that they were. Now, I will also state that, you know, MTA came to all of the providers and basically said, hey, we're going to run a shuttle to one of the local hospitals, you know, here um, in Baltimore. Um, so, again, it was about ensuring that we had enough operators just to provide that service. And we received this wonderful um, uh, compliment um, that, you know, we was providing a great service and they really appreciated the heroes of TransDev. So, um, you know, we're, we're bouncing back um, and we're on the roll again to try to hire more people because, uh, you know, things have increased, meaning that we're transporting people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, you know, we're trying to get back to some type of normalcy. So we're, we're getting there and um, we just want people to join our team and feel the, the, the excitement of helping others because that's what we're here to do. That was a great answer. I appreciate that. And on behalf of my mom, yes, thank you. You guys were definitely, definitely heroes. I mean, to a lot of folks. So we appreciate you out there. So I'm going to toss this out to Kendra and Andrea. So what are you hiring for right now? Just a paratransit, CDLA? Mm -hmm. I get this question a lot. Do you do full-time and part-time? Because I have a lot of folks that drive, and they would love to maybe possibly work for your companies part-time. I don't know if there's any positions like that. So, you know, let me know, let me know how many people you're looking for, that type thing. And I'm going to start off with you, Kendra. Sure. So at Dream Management, we do hire for part-time which means typically it's not your four hours here, four hours there a day. We do ask that you could commit to at least two days a week, um, working eight hours each day. Um, schedules vary, so I can't promise any type of schedules, and that's for both full-time and part-time. It's based off of the need at the moment. Um, but yes, we do offer both here at dream management part-time and full-time okay. um also what we're looking for right now at this moment is um i'm sorry what is it so any class c drivers can have a 
MTA Mobility, which is the paratransit jobs, um, and also um, CDL drivers, which is another entity that we're hiring for, which is the county connector. Um, but however, the location is in Arundel County. So if you're in the city, we just ask that you have adequate transportation to get yourself to and from work. Um, again, those hours vary as well. How about you, Andrea? How about uh, TransDev? Okay, Tra we're currently hiring for paratransit drivers. Um, it is a full-time position. We do not have part-time positions. Okay. Uh, you do need a valid Maryland's driver's license and you do not need a CDL license. It's just a regular Maryland's driver's license. You must be 21 years of age. Uh, we do uh, immediate hiring. Right now we're paying $20 an hour and we have a wonderful $3,000 sign-on bonus um, that is paid in increments as you reach certain goals. You do go through a three-week extensive classroom training. Uh, we do need you to be committed to that classroom training once you, we hire you. Uh, we do need you to be committed because that's an extensive training and you'll get all the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are needed for this position. Um, we do a background check. We do a drug and alcohol screening, and we also require a DOT physical. We will schedule all that through our Concentra, our de dedicated Concentra care uh, facility, and we'll take care of all that for you. And we definitely look forward to having a lot of great applicants come in. You can walk in and uh, send Bill your resume, and we will definitely do as much as we can to get great people hired. Okay. I want to stay with you and Andrea. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? I was going to say, I would like to add one more thing. As okay. Andrea said, for TransDev, the, the age is 20, at least 21. For Dream Management, the age is 23. So okay. you must be at least 23 to work for paratransit here at Dream Management. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, Kendra, I'm going to stay with you and Andrea for a second because I know in speaking to you, your companies in the past that there you guys have training for when folks sign up and some people make it through and some people don't so talk to me about how the training works what people are to expect and what you know what kind of qualities work and what doesn't i mean i know we all want go-getters and things like that number one it helps if you show up every day for the training i know that's part of it but what works for you guys for folks to get through the training program? And I'll start off with you, Azure. Okay. Um, our biggest challenge has been the background in drug tests uh, mm -hmm. coming back. So, um, you know, it usually takes about a week. We do start <laughs> you, but it is contingent on background and drug screens being cleared. Okay. And so how, far you, how far do you guys go back with the backgrounds? Uh, 10 years, I believe. Am I correct, Arlette? Yes, ma'am. At least 10 years. Oh, so it's not seven years. anymore. Okay, so I'm glad no. I asked that question. Okay. It's at least 10 years, and we okay. do have um, a three-year uh, requisition on, request, re requisite on address. So we do go back three years for address, too. So it's a, it's a pretty stringent uh, uh, some things process, you have to yes. process to get, just to get to the training. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so Kendra, talk to me about what the training actually entails, what folks can expect. Is it a classroom? Is it in the field combination? How does that work? Sure. So it starts off in the classroom, and then the second week you move to basic training or basic skills training, which will be an obstacle course on a parking lot, which you will be able to learn how to not only drive the bus, but you will also learn how to operate the bus and work the wheelchair lift, put seats down, and also learn how to work the ins and outs of the dash and the dispatch. So you will learn everything about how your bus runs as well as how to operate the bus safely. Your third week is usually an adjacent cadet training. That training is contingent upon if you can pass your second week. That training is also when you're on the road, you will be partnered with a trainer you will have that trainer schedule because that trainer is also a driver and you will then 
be on the road, driving that bus with that trainer, picking up passengers and dropping them off where they need to go. Um, and vice versa. You will also be picking them up and taking them with, um, from wherever you drop them off to and taking them wherever they need to go again or back home. Um, once you're done that training, typically in your third week or towards the end of your third week, you will get your, they, they will put schedules in front of you and you get to pick a schedule. Once your schedule is chosen, that is your schedule for at least the next six months. Um, you're stuck with that schedule. There's no, hey, that schedule, you know, you could talk to someone about it. Maybe that schedule doesn't work with you. But for the most part, I always advise everyone in an interview, make sure the schedule works for you. Don't just choose a schedule because it may have days that you want off, such as a Friday and a Saturday. Take a schedule that you know is not going to set your up, yourself up for failure. If you're not a morning person, do not choose a schedule at 5 a.m. Kendra, that is great advice for every, every industry. Um, <laughs> I was uh, I was recruiting for a high rise company. They needed window washers. And I had $30 an hour. And I was talking about that. And all I heard was the money. Mm -hmm. And then when I started interviewing people, I'm like, you know, you're on a high rise, right? Because you're hanging off of a building. You're like, oh, well, I'm afraid of heights. So, you know, <laughs> little details like that, that we kind of, you know, we kind of pay attention to. You know what I mean? Right. So if you don't like to drive and you don't like to drive people, Maybe this isn't for you. So you don't need to keep that kind of stuff in mind. All right. So Arlette and James, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. I always like to hear about corporate culture and, you know, I, some of the feedback I get from employ from uh, employees all the time is that, well, this isn't what I expected. I thought it was going to go like this. So tell me what a typical day is in the life of a dream management driver of a trans driver when they hop on that bus, what type of people, how many routes they're going to do, all the different things they're going to go. And um, Arlette, I'll let you start off with that one. Absolutely. So a typical day is, and I'll start with uh, the two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay. Wow. So at okay. Two o'clock in the morning, you're actually going to go out, you're going to pre-trip your vehicle. Um, and of course, after you receive your manifest or schedule, uh, you're going to pre-trip your vehicle. You're going to hit the road. Um, and then you're going to actually pick up your first passenger on time, of course. And there sometimes will be multiple people that you have to pick up throughout the day. So we're picking up, we're dropping off. We have to provide what we call door-to-door -door service, meaning you have to get out of the vehicle for every single trip. Even though you may have someone that may be at your door, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to make sure that they enter that vehicle safely and that you actually ensure that they are secure, meaning um, their seatbelt, making sure they have their seatbelts on. Um, if it is a passenger that actually has a mobility device, such as a wheelchair or a walker, it is your responsibility to ensure that they get on the lift, um, that you bring them in, you secure them. Um, and then you, again, take them to their destination. So we're going to do this for eight to 10 hours a day, depending on your schedule. Um, you will have breaks, you know, in between. You may have some downtime in between. When I say downtime, basically meaning time in between your pickups. Um, and if you've got time in between your pickups, sometimes people uh, or our operators utilize that to use the restroom, when they have their 30 minute break or their hour break, uh, they go and actually have a, a, a lunch. They come back and they, you know, complete the rest of their day. They come in in the afternoon. They do what we call a post trip, making sure that again, all the instruments and everything is working properly. They come into dispatch, um, they turn in their manifest and um, they're good to go home. And then, we're going to try it again the next day. Um, now, is there it, overtime? Do, do you guys work a lot of overtime? Oh, yeah. We offer overtime. Um, mm -hmm. You know, drivers can work up to six days a week. Okay. okay. Are they, weekends they, required? They will. Yes, weekends are required. Okay. Um, currently, you know, everyone will have a five-day schedule with two consecutive days off. 
And those consecutive days actually could be a Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and I will be honest with you, uh, we're, we're a union uh, shop. And so we all know that seniority prevails. So um, I will not mislead you in telling you, hey, yeah, you're going to be off on the weekends. No, I'm sorry. That's not happening because, again, those that have worked here and, and up on that seniority list, they have already taken those routes. So you will be required to work on the weekends. Um, and also you will, um, we expect for people to be flexible. And when I say flexible, um, some of the morning schedules are gone as uh, Ms. Kendra uh, spoke up earlier. So it will be afternoon routes. Afternoon routes start as early as 11 a.m. in the morning um, from 11 a.m. My last driver comes in for their shift at four o'clock p.m. And then they run up until, you know, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. So again, uh, I love what Kendra said. If you're not a morning person, don't look for a morning route. If you know, because I have a daughter that's 24 years old and she'll tell me I'm not a morning person. So be true to yourself. Awesome. James, you want to add anything to that? Oh, no, absolutely. You mentioned uh, corporate culture, uh, both Transdev and Dream Management. We cooperate with each other. Uh, our drivers work out of the Transdev facility, um, but our central office location is here in Remington on 28th Street. <laughs> Uh, at the Transdev facility, we have two wonderful on-site supervisors, Chantel Kennedy and Isaac Tynes. Uh, they are always there for our drivers to reach out to. They have their cell phone numbers. Uh, if there is an accident, if I have an issue with a passenger, they, of course, contact dispatch, but they can always reach out to our supervisors, uh, ask for advice on how to, daily, on how to handle uh, the daily routine, as uh, Ms. Arlette said. And it's really about uh, having drivers come into the door. We want them to realize you're you're not just an operator. You are the the wheels that help bring that help move this whole infrastructure and operation together. Without you, we could tell the vans to drive themselves, but we don't have anyone to drive. We need people to drive to move the people where they need to go those with mobility issues, medical issues, getting them where they need to go. So being flexible is important. Having the soft skills of customer service, you're going to be talking to everyone at every single stop. You're going to meet individuals that have amazing stories and amazing interests. So being able to explain yourself, uh, understand where they're coming from, that's also, also always very important. Okay. Awesome. All right. Appreciate that. So I'm saving the good stuff. So I've noticed I get a lot of flyers in my email from companies. You guys, when I get flyers and I see from the paratransit, the first thing is in like 64 font type sign in bonus. You, just, you guys like plaster sign in bonus. And I'm like, wow, it was $1,000. Then it's $2,000. Then it's $3,000. I have all these people call me. Do I get $3,000 as soon as I get sign on? So I want to talk a little bit about that because compensation since I started working on you guys. I first started working with mobility companies. And I know First Transit's a, a competitor of your guys. But I've worked with them. And I've worked with you guys also. It was like 13 14 bucks now i'm understanding it's 20 dollars an hour is that correct That's which is fantastic correct. and so can you talk a little bit about the benefits the compensation and i've got to hear about how that bonus works so i'm going to start off with you kendra you want to talk a little bit about the compensation sure i'll talk about what we offer here at dream management it's a little okay. different from trends dev all right. So <laughs> what we offer here is a $500 signing bonus. Oh, um, I pumped it up too high. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that $500 signing bonus is contingent upon your 90 day probationary period. So that means no miss, no call outs, no days missed, no, no show, no calls, no latenesses. And also no accidents so if you can get through those things the only thing that's different from pretty much any non any probationary period any job pretty much is the accident portion so if you can get past that within your first 90 days 
then Dream Management will give you a $500 signing bonus. And we don't sprinkle it across each paycheck. We actually give you the entire $500 all at once. Um, so that's our compensation package as far as the signing bonus go. Now, we do offer $20 an hour. We also, right now, we're not offering any benefits, but we're hoping by the end of the year, meaning like November, December, we're hoping to be able to offer our employees health insurance and possibly a 401k. Can I add on to that, Kendra? Sure can. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Appreciate it. Uh, so TransDev is uh, is an everywhere company. As, they, as you know, they provide services all over the country. Dream Management, we're a small minority-owned business. We've been in Maryland since 1999, um, and we've been in Baltimore, itself located for the last 10 years or so. So we offer a different sort of more limited compensation structure, but we all, we are a smaller, more tightly knit team. When you come here to the office for your interview, I will be here, always able to greet you. Uh, we uh, offer a, also a $100 referral bonus. So for every driver you recommend to us that makes it through their 90 days, uh, you automatically get $100 every single time. And I believe we're also offering a $100 bonus uh, every pay period if you haven't missed any routes or days. Um, and I think that's the remainder of our compensation. Hmm. I know it's a hundred dollars, also a hundred dollars if you work a day off in oh. sense of oh. as well. Yeah, yes. there you go. That's what it meant. Thank you, Kendra. No problem. Andrew, you want to talk about the compensation? I think it's a little bit different at uh, Transdev. Yes, it is. Yes, I would love to talk about it. We are offering twenty dollars an hour. Uh, we do have the three thousand dollars sign-on bonus after you complete the three-week training session. And that's no absenteeism. You're there on time. You're participating, and you've graduated. You will get the first five hundred dollars, and then it is paid in increments as you over the next year as you achieve goals and as you you know you build up your seniority. Um, as far as benefits, after your 90-day probation, we have 401k, we have health, vision, dental, and uh, absolutely wonderful benefits that come along with it. As uh, James said, we are an international company, so there's lots of opportunities for growth and uh, career advancement. Did I miss anything, Arlette? I'm, like I said, I'm new to the role, too, and I want to make sure I cover every aspect of this because it is an exciting career. Uh, yes, ma'am. I just want to make one correction. Um, okay. That will be $600 um, oh, paid okay. out um, for, you know, five times Okay. Um, to, to, to get the $3,000. I did my um, math wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you're good. You're good. So, um, yes, and... On top of that, again, you know, we, we do offer the overtime. Um, there is no incentive for overtime. Um, but again, we encourage folks, you know, do what you need to do in order to make the extra money, you know, while you can. Uh, we do offer uh, 32 hours of personal leave. Uh, we offer eight hours every quarter. So come the end of the year, you'll have up to 32 hours that first year. And I'm going to ask, uh, and this is, I'm going to ask, uh, throw this back to uh, James and Arlette. Everybody, you know, we all start out in a certain position. Are there upward mobility opportunities at your companies? Absolutely. So one of my... So can I get promoted? Can I start off as a driver? And the next thing you know, I can work in the front office, I can become a, a recruiter or I can be an assistant manager. Talk to me about there's opportunities for folks to, you know, make more money down the road. So two of my favorite success stories are one, our supervisor, Chantel Kennedy, or sorry, assistant supervisor. She started off as a driver. Um, and after a couple of years, uh, we had an opening and she moved up to assistant supervisor and she's been in that role for two or three years now. And she knows exactly 
the struggles and achievements that all the drivers face. She makes sure us over here at headquarters with our Monday meetings that we know, all right, this driver did an amazing job. Uh, what can you do to help us recognize them? I believe last Monday she gave us three names of three drivers that just outshone the rest. And our president and myself are looking, are putting together a certificate and gift card for them. Another example, several years ago, we had uh, Joseph DiCarlo, I believe, who started off as a driver with us. And up in our executive positions, we had an opening for a business developer management. Um, and this was before my time here. Uh, and he was one of the best business developers we've ever had since then. He's since moved on to uh, bigger and better pastures. But so there is direct uh opportunities for mobility so to speak if you'll excuse the pun and how about you arla give me a good give me a, give me a good uh success story absolutely absolutely um so back in 2017 i had a um operation supervisor that was doing a extraordinary job and the window of opportunity opened um and actually i asked him to apply for the operations manager's position and he has been our operations manager for the past i want to say five years he has he's done really great and he actually tells his story better than what i could but when he started here, actually 10 years ago, he, he was what we call a window dispatcher. So, you know, over the years, he learned as much as he could. He applied himself and it has paid off for him. You know, so again, I personally like to promote from within. And the reason for that is because, again, sometimes people are overlooked. Sometimes, you know, people do not get the opportunity that they deserve. And I, you know, personally uh, encourage my team to post positions, not only just on our website, but we have monitors in our driver's lounge where they can actually see the openings um, for them to apply. But I make it very clear to them that, you know, one thing we don't do internally is uh, promote problems. Again, as you know, we've said um, through the session here that you have got to make sure you come to work. You got to make sure that you are basically being productive um, and that you're not having accidents because we take all those things into consideration whenever we are looking to promote from within. Um, and again, there are other opportunities, trainers, uh, road supervisors, administrative staff, um, and I could go on and on, but the, you know, the opportunity is there, but it's up to you as an individual to apply yourself and your skills. Yeah. Upward mobility is always a key to keeping good employees. Absolutely. Now, it's not always just the paycheck. People want opportunities to, to move up and expand, especially, you know, in this environment. So I'm going to put Kendra and Andrew on the spot because you guys are newbies. You guys <laughs> have only been with the company for a couple of months. So I want to <laughs> hear, is it everything that you expected? To, is there some things that you weren't expecting when you take, took this job? So I'll let you guys pick who wants to talk first about this because uh, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. Uh -oh. I'll start with you, Kendra. Is it everything you thought was going to be or you're some days you're like, wow, I don't know how I have much have time to, <laughs> to do all of this. <laughs> I will say this, this job is probably the one job where I come in the door and I'm busy and I leave out the door and I'm still busy. Um, I have never really had a job like that. So this job definitely keeps me busy. Um, if I could stay late, I probably would to get things done. Um, I did not come in. I honestly did not know what to expect. So I had no expectations, honestly. Um, when I walked up, when I walked up to the door, I was just like, what is this place? But, um, at this point now, it's just, it's a job. 
and I like it. I like it a lot. I've learned a lot. Um, it's my first recruiting job, to be honest. So I have definitely, there has been a learning curve, lots of training and lots of um, help from my coworkers. But I've really enjoy what I do. And I have not been able to say that about most of the jobs I've worked. Yeah, you know, the key thing, and I've been doing this a long time, if you wake up and you're not in a cold sweat, you know, you don't get Monday this on a Sunday night at eight o'clock, oh my God, I have to go to work. And you actually wake up and believe it or not, you look forward to going to work. You won 90% of the battle. You, know, you exactly. really have. You exactly. just have to find a place that you're happy at. And that's really mm -hmm. cool. Andrew, you want to talk about your experiences in the first couple of months that you've uh, been trans up? Absolutely. It's been a very enjoyable experience. It's been a lot, a lot of learning. I've been in HR for almost 20 years and an HR manager. So um, there are a lot of similarities to what I've done before. And there's a lot of challenges and learnings that I'm having to do now. Uh, I will say during the interview process with Arlette and the regional HR uh, director, they gave me a realistic job expectation of what the environment was like. So I appreciated that coming in. So I didn't have any truly uh, surprises. And the team that I'm working with has been very supportive, informative. I've got a great team that are very knowledgeable and I, I'm, I'm just pleased with everything at this point. I think I made the right choice. Awesome, awesome. So we have some folks in the audience. Uh, hi, April and Veronica. They're saying that uh, they've applied. Send me your resume. Um, it could be that there could be an issue with them getting back to you. I have lots of driving positions. If um, there might not be a fit because of issues and background or things like that, I do have other companies open to you. So. Always send a resume. I literally have about 20 uh, co transportation companies looking for folks right now. And Karen Harrison has a great question. So I know you do a 10 year background check, but if I had a felony from 15, 20, 25 years ago, would I be able to work for your companies? And I'll start off with, I, I saw a little head nod. And just to you know, let you guys know, that's what my main thing is. I work with a lot of justice involved folks, second chance. Folks, and I know I have sent folks to you guys that had older felonies, and you took them. So, you know, um, go ahead and uh, speak on that, Arla. Um, Absolutely. Um, so, again, the contract, the MTA contract, is very specific about who, about the requirements. Um, so, therefore, you know, once we receive the, the background check, um, we have to go through it thoroughly. Um, to ensure that we are in full compliance. But to answer the question, you know, if there is a felony on someone's record for 15, 20 years ago, um, that is something that does not disqualify the individual. Um, we will actually review. Um, and if, if need to be, we have the option to take it to MTA for them to further review to make a determination. So it is not a disqualifier. You want to add anything to that, James? Oh, absolutely. As Arlette says, we follow the same process. Uh, we collaborate. Uh, TransDev gets the backgrounds for us, and we all review it together and decide what, how we can proceed. What Kendra and I really recommend is for everyone to know what is on your driving record and what is on your criminal record, if you think there might be things on there. Uh, people have sometimes had uh, uh, driving related uh, court appearances that they thought were expunged from their criminal record, but you need to get it removed from your driving record as well. So if you think there might be something on one of these records, uh, you can pull your own driving record online, uh, your complete driving record from the MTA portal. Take a look before you start applying to transportation jobs. Um, I do want to let you know that if you want to pull your own record before you come in for an interview with us, you need to pull your complete certified driving record. There's a couple different options up there, but come and how in. How much is that right now? How much is a certified? Is that like 15 bucks? 12, much 12, dollars. 12 bucks. Okay. And yep. can you get that done at a kiosk or you have to go like to the main one in Glen Burnie? Nope. Or? You can do it online. 
You okay, can do you it online need to... or you can go to the kiosk. You can go online because I had a customer ask me that the other day and I did not have it so that you can get your driving record right on yeah. the internet. Yes, really? yes. from the wow. MTA portal, okay. like you would go in to renew your license or, or what have you. It, okay. It's a new portal since November. Um, okay. So, but you can go in there and once you order it in the portal, it's different from the kiosk. You can access it whenever. It's saved as a transaction. You can look at it again in six months. You lose the copy you printed. It's still in there. You can email it. So I think that's the coolest thing about the new portal. That's great. Good information. And Karen, I know you don't have any felonies, but it's a great question. And you know, as someone who works with folks that have backgrounds, I was actually going to get to that. So I appreciate the answer. And I know you guys have hired folks with felonies in the past, and I do appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it's 50 minutes into the show. I could go on and on and on. This has been fun, guys. I appreciate you. Um, I'll just go around, start off with you. Actually, is there anything you want to add or end with? Because uh, unfortunately, I have to end in about 10 minutes. But uh, you know, again, it's been a pleasure. And I can tell you that uh, my folks out there, there's lots of good opportunities. So, Andrew, just you give, me, give me a little 20-second commercial why people should work for Transdo. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, great career, great mobility, uh, lots of uh, advancement opportunities, and a friendly uh, family atmosphere environment. So it's a great place to work, and we look forward to having great careers started. Go ahead, Arlette. You're, you're on mute, Arlette. <laughs> If you love people, if you love to drive, then come on down to Transdev. We got a spot for you. I need to put that on a t-shirt. That's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> that. That's really good. Okay, uh, let's go with Kendra. What you got for me? That's going to be a tough one to beat, Kendra. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to go after that? Um, Dream Management is a small but mighty company. Um we are a diverse company, minority owned. Um, we are a very family oriented company. Um, so if you're interested in any driving jobs, we are your place to come. Um, if you enjoy driving and you enjoy people, you have to be a people person for this job. Um, I think if you are those two things, you should definitely imply, apply via Indeed with your resume, and we'll be in touch. Right. Awesome. Thank you. And James, you want to wrap it up for me? Oh, absolutely. If you want to be, we're a small team. We're a small family. If you want to know the vice president by name, the supervisors, you have their cell phones, uh, work for us. We want you to feel valued, and we want you to know that we want we want you to know that we're dedicated to you and hopefully you can feel dedicated uh, to us as well. I see April and uh, Veronica uh, said in the chat, they've applied several times. Uh, maybe it fell through the cracks. Um, feel free to email above at recruiter at dream mgmt.com. We're also on indeed and on Maryland workforce exchange. So feel free to reach out and we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Man, time flew by. I really enjoyed this very much. And hopefully uh, we're putting together some uh, summertime events. I'll be able to see you guys uh, in the future. And thanks again very much. Yeah. We really appreciate companies like you're stepping up during the pandemic and looking out for the folks in, the, in Baltimore and surrounding areas. Everybody have a great weekend. And thanks again for coming on today. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy Thank Father's you. Day, Bill. Have a lovely day. Have a day. Day. Well day. Well day. <laughs> May you get everything you want. All right. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Appreciate it. Have a bye. good day. Take care, guys. Right. That was awesome. Some great opportunities there. And again, if it's if that doesn't fit you, hey, just send me your resume. I can tell you if I don't have a fit for you, our employer services, we've got so many great jobs available right now. Go on our job board on the MOED site. You'll see tons and tons of opportunities. Now, we'll say this, that, um, you know, employers are starting to step up a little bit with wages. They really are. So, you know, you might have not wanted to do an opportunity a year or two years ago because the money wasn't right. Go back and revisit it. 
you might see a really good opportunity. We'll do a, a quick shout out to Aunt Didi out there, uh, Deidre Moore Durant over at the Eastside Career Center. She wants to let, let everybody know that uh, they're having a resource fair June 23rd. Uh, just contact the center for more information, 410-396-9030. Great, great center. They do great work over there serving the uh, East Baltimore area and the surrounding areas. Give them a call. Let's see what they got going on. And I think we had a couple of job fairs that uh, Katani wanted me to talk about. So if we can pull up the slides real fast. I think there was a Johns Hopkins fair getting ready to come up. Katani, if you could pull that up. And uh, let's see what else we have. Let's see. Give us one sec. Yeah. And so there's going to be a job fair June 18th and June 21st at the Baltimore Convention Center. And this is working for the Hopkins Dining Program. It looks like they've got a variety of positions like cashier, catering attendant, cook, uh, food prep. So anybody in the hospitality industry looks like any delivery drivers. Wow, this is pretty cool. Uh, if anybody's interested in that, uh, reach out to us. Um, and I think, uh, Katanya, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but uh, uh, let me know who is handling that. But uh, you can, uh, if you need additional information, I don't see a phone number on there. Reach out to us at the uh, different career centers, and we'll be able to help you out with that. But it looks like they're doing a pretty big job here at the convention center this weekend and next week. And Bite Back, great program. They're getting ready to do uh, enrollment on June 20th, and these are um, tech job uh, tech trainings. And for African-American and Latina women uh, only, it's a six-week course located on Charles Street. Um, we have a lot of really cool organizations in the area, IT Works, uh, Empower, a bite back that focus in the IT world. Brand, I mean, IT is hurting as a whole as far as the sector. They need workers badly, even something as simple as help desk. So this is a great field to get into. If you guys are interested, uh, there's a phone number there, 443-860-2252. Give them a holler. Um, you know, and I think that's something we're probably going to be focusing on in the coming weeks. Lots of great trainings. We actually have a program called Train Up that we've uh, already started. And uh, we'll be focusing and talking about that in the coming weeks where we do – some paid trainings, fifteen dollars an hour. How you doing, Miss Lester? Thanks for coming on as always. Um, but there's lots of great training opportunities, and you know, my my thing with training is pretty simple. Training really doesn't help. Oh, thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. Training isn't really helpful unless it leads to something else. Okay. You know, we have folks, we put people in training all the time, but unless it leads to a job or maybe you want to further your education, there's no point. So pick your trainings carefully. Try to get in fields that are hiring and are growing. And, you know, I can tell you the healthcare field, the hospitality field, the transportation field, the construction field. Uh, we have a great apprenticeship program. You know, shout out to it's Wendy and her team out there doing the apprenticeships. We have so many cool apprenticeships. There's opportunities to make good, solid money right now. So, you know, stay in touch with our agency and uh, we can definitely help you. So I think that's about it. Um, oh, what, that's right. I forgot one thing. The election's coming up in July, you know, and all I got to say is look around. It's really, really important that we get everybody out there to vote. Uh, the deadline is June 28th to get your, make sure your re registration information is correct or to register to vote. Um, and don't forget the uh, early voting is going to be from July 7th to July 14th this year for the gubernatorial primary election. Um, so it's, you know, my, my grandfather always had a saying to me, that everybody has an opinion, but does your opinion matter if you don't vote? Your opinion matters a little bit more <laughs> when you vote. You know, get out there, make your voice heard, please. Participate. Please participate. This is the only way we're going to change things. Thank you very much for joining the show today, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Marvin will be on the show next week, uh, so come on and tune in, and everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you.